Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 21. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 2, or the PDFs or the PowerPoints, click on the link below the video. <coughs> All right, in this video, we need to see how to convert decimals to fractions and convert fractions to decimal. Now, I'm going to go over and do this by hand first. Now, we want to start by looking at from decimal to fraction. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to start with the fraction 0 0.875. Now, I'm a little bit uh, clumsy with this handwritten thing here, but we'll get through it here. Now, what in the world do we do? Well, let's, well I'm going to show you two ways. I'm going to say equals. And I'm going to go 0 0.875 divided by 1. I'm actually going to do it like this. It's going to have a 0 right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to slide the decimal. Let's see if I can change the cover color. Let's see, pen, ink. All right, so the way you do it is you slide the decimal. You go 1, 2, 3, because you want a a whole number up here. Well, if I slide the decimal three times over here, you'd have to do it over here. And there's nothing here, so watch this. One, two, three, right? And then each one of these cups will hold a zero. So what we want now, if I right click and uh, change the color. So now we're going to get equals eight. 75 divided by 1,000, right? So now we just do, oh, we have a fraction, right? And we actually need to calculate all the prime factors. Oh, 875 and 1,000, we've got to find all the prime factors. You know, in the PDFs, I have this done by hand, but I'm going to go over to Excel because it is much easier in Excel. Right? Hard to show you this in Excel, but that is a, kind of the cool way to remember. You make these little boop, 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 and have a cup. Right, Fill in the zeros here, just move the decimal here. All right, so I'm going to go over to Excel. Start with 875, and then here it will be 1,000. Now remember our trick. We do have a pretty cool trick here, and I'm going to add some green here. Remember, you have to do, to do this trick, you have to have your list of prime factors off to the side somewhere. So the, or maybe you have them memorized. And you just do your division equals, hey, this divided by, well, wait a second, there's 0 there. By the way, what is that, what is that error right there? This is divide by 0. Are you allowed to divide by 0? No, it's like infinity or something, so you can't do it. But here's what you do. You start with the first uh, prime number, 2. Oh, so it doesn't, it, we can't use that one. How about 3? No, not 3 either. And you got to remember 4 is not the prime number 5. Oh, OK. So we could have guessed. Remember, we had our divisibility rules. 5, if the number ends with 5 and 0, then it's divisible by 5. But we needed to check the 2 and the 3. All right. So now, as we saw before, this is a relative cell reference. It's always going to take whatever number we just have above us divided by the prime factor we're typing in. So I'm just going to escape and copy this all the way down. And then just keep trying. All right, so 2 and 3 is out, so I'll try another 5. Oh, oh 35, OK. I'll try another 5. Oh, look at that. And finally, I know a 5 is not going to go in there, so I'm going to try a 7. Remember, the rule is when you do this in Excel, when you get the 1, then you have your list of prime factors. Now I'm going to come over here. And where is the eraser button? Home. Over here, I love the eraser button because it not only could just clear format, here, by the way, there's clear contents. That's the delete key, right? Just the formats and all. I want to clear not only the stuff in the cell, in our case a formula, but also the formatting. Now let's try this over here. Equals one cell above divided by one cell to my left. I love relative cell references. Divide by 0, I know, I know. We're not supposed to have divide by 0, but now let's try it, OK? I'm going to try 2. OK, so that worked, and a 2. And don't forget, I mean, if you're learning cell references in the class for the first time, that is obeying us, right? It's just taking that 500 divided by whatever we type in there. 
All right, 250. Uh, how about a 2? Oh, 125. Now, you could try a 2, but I see a 5 there, so it's probably divisible by 5. Oh, 2. No, so it's not 2. How about 3? No, no. How about 5? OK, so we got a 5. 5. Um, how about another 5? And finally, a 5. So we got our 1. I'm going to come here. I'm going to do my uh, eraser all. All right, so there's our prime factors. <clears throat> now we can go over. So we have three twos, three fives, three fives, and a seven. So if I'm um, over here, then I get something like this. I'm going to type it over here. So in the top is the 875, so I have a five, five, and that little multiplication, five. I'm going to go seven. And then in the bottom, I think, if I remember right, five times five times five times 2 times 2 times 2. I'm going to go look over in Excel. What did I get? OK, so that's correct there. And now I can, I wish I knew the keyboard shortcuts in PowerPoint. I could just zoop, zoop. There's three fives. Remember, if something's in the top and the bottom, you're allowed to cancel it. There it is. Look at that. So our uh, answer will be, oh, 7. Actually, I usually draw 7s like that. And then 2 times 2 times 2, that's 2 raised to the third power. That's 8. So lo and behold, it is much more convenient, um, instead of using this fraction, to use 7 8. So now let's go over here to Excel. All right, so in Excel, the reason we went through all this um, process here is because if we're going to convert it, no problem. This number is a number typed in. But now I'm going to equals and point to that, Control Enter, and it's all about formatting. So I'm going to Control 1, and I want 7 8 So I come down to Custom, I highlight General, and I type question mark slash question mark. Now remember, the reason we do this is because if we were to come here and type this in, and we, we didn't in our mind know for sure that 8.875 was equivalent to 7 8 maybe we'd be tr being maybe we'd be tricked by formatting all right the, of course um, the other way you could do it is you could simply then type in equals 7 divided divided by 8 and this formatting is right there can I come up to the format painter that button right there says copy just the formatting and then see the paintbrush there and then I click and boop, it applies that now, convert fraction to decimal. So I'm going to go like this. And convert fraction. So this is uh, D to F. Oh, from decimal to fraction. And here we'll do fraction. Whoa. I meant to do that arrow there, right? To D. All right, so we're going to start with 7 eighths. Well, what is a fraction? A fraction is just division, right? That little thing means dividing. So we're going to take uh, 7 divided by 8 and simply right here equals and then 8. So our question is, how many 8s are in 7? Well, there's not even 1, so we've got to come up here. I have a, de I have a decimal right here, and I kind of slide it up here right in the right position. So there's not even one. So then I can add a 0 here. How many 8s are in 70? So there are 8 in 70. And we can come off to the side and go 8 times 8 equals 64. So we write our. 64 here, and then we have to subtract. Oh, we got to put an 8 up here. Right, all lined up. So that gives us remainder 6. So now the question is how many 8s are in 60? So that is 7 times 8 equals 56. So we put a 7 here. Right, and then we uh, don't have enough room here, so we go 56. And we subtract it. 
we get a 4 here. I'm going to write that over here. And then we add a 0. Say how many 8s are in 40? Well, 8 times 5 equals 40. So we have 5. And there is our conversion from fraction, from a fraction of 7, 8 to our decimal. Now, let's go over to Excel, right? So in Excel, we were up here, down here. Uh, we simply uh, do what? If we have an input like this, we could say uh, that right there. Now, when we made that formula, I got the formatting, but what do we know? Oh, in Excel, we just have to wipe away the formatting because that's a number formatting. If we apply general, so if we come up here to general, then we simply see the decimal. Similarly, you could have said equals in a cell that has no number form and equals either, OK, so 7 eighths like this. And then when you hit Enter, it just shows you the decimal by default. Now, I do want to go back over. I want to come uh, back to converting decimals to fraction. So here we did it. Um, by sliding the decimals. There's another way we could do that. And maybe I have to, uh, in, I'm going to keep this. Again, I'm going to post these. OK, we're going to start with that same, right? So we have zoop. I'm going to say, what does that equal? Well, instead of doing it sliding the decimal, we could simply say 0.875. Divided by 1 times 1. Now, we saw this trick, but 1 is a magic number in math for sure. But we know that if we multiply 1 times this, it's the same. Well, the, the type of 1 I'm going to choose is I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, right? So I know that I need three zeros. So I'm going to write 0.875 over 1 times 1,000. This is not, I, I like the other way better, but this shows you the meaning of sliding the decimals. This is why we can slide the decimals. Any number times 1 is still itself. So in essence, when you do this, you're just converting it to a different form, even though they're equivalent. All right, so then we multiply across the top. You get 8, 7, 5. And here you get 1,000. And then you could do your little. Um, prime factors and all uh, reduce the fraction and get your 7 eighths. So this equals to 7 eighths. All right, uh, so in this video, we saw how to convert from decimal to fraction and convert fraction to decimal. Again, uh, we're, some of this kind of fraction stuff you just have to do on a piece of paper by hand. But certainly doing some of the prime factor stuff uh, is sped up using Excel. And don't forget your number formatting. Here we apply the number formatting. And here, we in this cell, we didn't apply anything, so it was general. And this one, we needed to erase the fraction number formatting. So what do we do? We apply general. Oh, hey, one more thing here. We want to scroll over to the side. I almost forgot. This, this section, um, this is actually in the textbook section 2.5. And it's just converting fraction to decimal and decimal to fraction. Here's one of the cool things about Excel, right? If these were all the common fractions that you use, maybe a 1 8th, 1 5th, 1 4 3 8ths, or whatever, right? These are like all thirds, eight sixteenths, et cetera. If these are the common fractions you use, you just enter them like this. You have a column that shows you what the fractions are. And again, this is how you enter fractions. Then you come over here. You say equals this, Control-Enter. And I just uh, went up to Control, actually, that's preformatted, Control-1. And if you use the number, you can choose however many decimals. See that preview right there? So I'm going to leave this one 15. Oh, 15 is, 15 is the max number of significant digits that Excel will show. Click OK. And then in this column, I'm going to say equals this, Control-Enter. Now, it, ha it sucked the formatting from there. <coughs> so I'm going to Control-1. And let's use number. Number gives us the most freedom with our decimals, right? I'm not going to use a separator. I'm just going to bloop. And let's say I just want uh, to show 4, right? So number, choose your decimals, no comma. Actually, I don't think the comma would matter. That's, that's for 
uh, thousands, millions, etc. So then I'm going to double click and send both of these down. So that's really cool about Excel. You enter, you, you use these all the time. Here's your conversion. That one's kind of annoying there. Let me just. Right, so there's your conversion right there. Or maybe if you wanted to see. And the only advantage to seeing these is you can see when it's a repeating decimal, right? All right, so that is section 2.5. Go ahead and you can do the homework on that. When we come back, our next video will be adding fractions. All right, see you next video.